what is up YouTube? So if you watched my previous video, I did not do like the brake lines from Carly suspension just because the video was already like 18 minutes long. I didn't want the video to hit the 20 mark. You know, I think 18 was still super long. So I made a separate video with just the brake lines and I'll have a separate video for the caster shims and then a separate video for leaf springs if you order leaf springs for your truck. But first things first, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing, hit the subscribe button, like this video, and let's get into this. All right, so once you get your truck jacked up on stands and your tires off, next step is to disconnect ABS from the brake line, sorry, brake line, which would just be this cable right here. So these just pull out little rubber grommets, slide out of the clamp like that. And then you'll have this little, uh, whatever you want to call this, uh, zip tie. There you go. I'll probably cut that because I hate fucking with these things back here. So I'll cut the zip tie, re-zip tie it to the new one. Here's another grommet up here. Boom, just like that. And then our next step is going to be disconnecting this little 10 millimeter right here. We'll take this bracket off and then we'll move into taking off the brake line with this banjo bolt right here. And then we need to clamp this up here and undo this and take this little clip out right here. So there's a little clip underneath. So we're gonna pry that off and they give you new ones of these. So make sure you utilize the ones that come in the kit. You also need to disconnect your vacuum line, which is just this little guy right here. It just pulls off, so set you down. You see that? There you go. All right. So you just kind of give a little twist, a little pull. There you go. Vacuum line disconnected. You can just leave this like that. You pull this vacuum line, push it through, because you're going to get an all-new bracket. Push that out like that. And then... I hate that they use these, but if you can get this off, more power to you. But I might just cut it. I don't know. But you need to pull that off. So I've discovered they do not supply you with, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, these clamps or whatever that the grommets will go into. So I'm just going to cut these off anyway, and I'll zip tie them to the, the new line. So. I'm not even worried about it. <laughs> Boom, pull that out. You got a rubber one there. You can leave this rubber one at the top. But now your ABS line is completely disconnected. You don't have to worry about that. This guy, I'll probably cut this too, cause fuck it. Just make sure you don't fuck up the hose, obviously. I'll probably find out later that you can just disconnect these, but I'll worry about that another time. So now this is completely disconnected. All right, all you have is this bracket, ABS line, which is this guy, disconnected. Now we're gonna go ahead and probably tackle this first, question mark. Or maybe I'll do the lower one first. But it is gonna be messy, so if you don't wanna mess all over your driveway, put a little bucket or a drip pan underneath this because it's gonna leak everywhere. Now we're gonna disconnect our banjo fitting here. This is a 14 millimeter. Got my bucket underneath here because I'm not trying to leak all over my driveway. But this will leak and you are going to have to bleed your brakes. Just be aware. If you do not know how to bleed your brakes, do not do this. I am gonna show you how to bleed your brakes, but if you are not confident in bleeding your brakes, probably not a good thing for you to try and accomplish. I'm just saying. Can't even get this fucking thing off. Come on. There we go. All right, so it shouldn't drain your whole reservoir, but it is gonna leak. Save your banjo fitting, because you're gonna reuse that. 
I do believe they supplied you with new copper fittings, but just in case, try not to fuck those up. And it would be a good idea to have towels because I'm dirty as shit and now I gotta touch my camera, so whatever. I didn't film this on the other side because I didn't want to do it this way, but this is gonna help you save some brake fluid. And it's windy as shit out here because I'm doing this in the middle of a storm like a jackass. But anyway, what I did to kind of save some brake fluid, right? Because all that's gonna leak out anyway from your caliper is take your banjo bolt out, throw that bitch to the side, and wrap this thing up and throw it up on top of your, your shock like that. There you go. There you go. Check this out. Like that, that way it's above your line right here, so it's not leaking out all over the place. There's a little tip for you. Just so you know, these are directional, right? So the driver's side, the little eyelet right here will go inside of the hole on the front. Just like that bracket is. Right there, there's a there's where your bolt goes in. There's a little eyelet over there. See? Same thing. So they are side specific, even if you don't think they are. And this will make your life a lot easier if you put this on first, like it says to do. In the thing, I can get it on. There we go. All right, so take off our old crush washers. I can grab the new ones. Grab the new one, rounded side facing the bolt head, flat side facing the surface. Put it through. Same thing on this side. Rounded side faces the line, flat side faces the caliper. Screw this in. And the only reason that I say this makes it easier, one, because you're following the directions, right? This is what it says to do. But whenever you take off that top line, it's gonna start leaking again. So if you already have this connected, you can shove this through the top and screw it back in right away without having to dick around with it. So, I'm gonna secure that just a smidge. And then we're gonna move up to the top side, which is a 13, so let's go tackle that. Next step, you gotta remove this bottom nut right here, which is a 13. So, we'll get this bottom nut off. It's gonna start leaking. And then we'll pop out this little clip with some pliers. And then we'll route our new line back up through to where it coils to the front side. So it'd be like that essentially, but just with the new line. And then we'll put our new clip that Carly gives us back in. I can't film me doing all this because it started raining. So I was just trying to get it all done before I got drenched. Anyway, so you're gonna smoke this thing down. Make sure you have a copper washer on the outside and on the inside. It's gonna route up, come through here. You're not gonna get any brackets to mount your ABS line, so you're gonna need zip ties. So you zip tie it here, here, however you want. Just make it look pretty. Make sure it's not gonna get caught by the spring or the tire turning in and out right here. When you got your bracket, you're gonna reuse your 10 millimeter bolt, and then you're gonna utilize this hole for the little uh, like stay. I put zip ties on both sides of this clamp because I couldn't clamp it down with the pliers I had. Zip ties here. You're gonna get this little uh, clip that you're gonna pull out the factory one It's gonna be this little pinchy guy So you're gonna pull the tiny one out. It's gonna sit like this with that little lip on the downside So you're gonna get your pliers in here and you can just pull that out And then you're gonna get like a hammer to install this one once you get the line in but this is what I was talking about So you're gonna route the, the brake lines gonna come through and then this big loop is gonna face forward 
You don't want it facing the spring because then it's going to get caught up in all this shit. So make sure your spring, or not your spring, your line is looping forward and coming up in. You got your clip. This is your 13 millimeter that you're going to undo, right? Then this is going to drop down. You can pull this line off. This will be your hard line right here. And then this whole thing will come out. And this is your brake line, right? So here's the piece that goes in to the caliper. And there's a piece that will drop down into the top, right? So that little recess is where the clip goes. Right here, right? Make sure the little lip is facing down. And you can just hammer that in. So now we got all this situated. I'll go over how you need to bleed your brake lines. So your brake line is gonna get bled through this little zerk fitting right here. So you can take this little rubber cap off. And once you take it off, you'll have a zerk fitting that's exposed and you can put like a little line on here that will drain into a bucket like so. And then you're gonna crack open this bleed, uh, bleed air screw or whatever the fuck you wanna call it. And someone will be in your vehicle, they'll pump the brakes three times. So it'll be one, two, three. And when they hit three, they're gonna hold it to the floor. And when they're holding to the floor, they're gonna tell you, and then you're gonna open up your zerk fitting to the left, you're gonna let all the pressure come out, right? If no uh, brake fluid comes out, that's okay. Just make sure that your reservoir in the engine bay is full. You don't want that to go empty because then it's just gonna suck air and it's gonna be terrible because then you're gonna have to start bleeding from the rear. So we're gonna bleed furthest side first, which would be, I believe, I gotta get in here and look again, but I believe it will be the passenger side that you will bleed first and then you will bleed driver's side last. But on the third one, they're gonna press it to the floor and hold it. You're gonna open it, bleed all that air out. Once it starts pushing, stops pushing bubbles and air, you'll turn it to the right to get it tight again, and then they can let go. And then one, two, three, hold, open it again. And you're just pretty much gonna keep doing that until you don't see bubbles coming out or it's spitting any more air. And like simultaneously, you need to be in between like brake. You need to tighten it back up, get back in your engine bay and make sure your reservoir isn't being drained, all right? Just a precaution because I don't want you to have to start at the back because then you're going to have to do all four, which would just be a pain in the ass. You don't want to do that. So uh, let's jump into this. I'll show you how this is done and that'll be it for this video. Sorry guys, I deleted the brake bleeding portion of this video, but I'll still show you how to do it so you understand. So first things first, you're going to have to get DOT brake fluid. This is your brake reservoir right here underneath your hood. It's a good idea to just have it open so it's venting and it's not like creating a vacuum as you're pumping and opening your Zerk fitting to bleed it. So I just take this off and just kind of set it there. You're also going to need to fill this as you're bleeding the brakes because you don't want this to go dry. Because if this goes dry, you're going to have to bleed the whole system, which is it's going to suck for you. So don't let that happen then we're gonna get underneath the truck right obviously if your truck is jacked up on stands this is a lot easier but they'll take this little rubber grommet off right here right here right comes off and this is what you're gonna put your wrench on so you're gonna have somebody in your truck they're gonna press the brakes three times, right? So they're gonna compress one, two, three, and hold. And on the third one, while they're still holding in the brake all the way down, you're gonna crack open your Zerk fitting. Make sure you put like a hose or something on this so it will drain into a bucket. You're gonna crack it open. You're gonna watch all the air push out. It's gonna look just like a cloudy mess. Then you're gonna close it before the person in your vehicle uh, lets off the brake. And then they're gonna let off the brake same thing while this is closed they're gonna one two three and hold you're gonna crack this open again bleed out more and then tighten it and then it's probably a good idea to go back up top and make sure you still have brake fluid because like i said you do not want to go dry on your brake fluid and then when you're done you tighten it down put this rubber cap back on and good to go let me show you what i mean by using your your brake hold on i know this might be a little self-explanatory but it'll help so the person in the truck is gonna go one two 
three and hold. And as they're holding, this is when you're gonna open up that Zerk fitting, let all the air out. And you do not wanna let go of this brake pedal until that Zerk fitting is closed because then it's just gonna suck air back in. So make sure they have the Zerk fitting closed and then you can let go. So pretty much the person in charge of this is gonna be the person on the Zerk fitting. So it'll be a good idea to have someone you can communicate with very well because the person on the Zerk fitting is gonna say, okay, let go of the brake or okay, pump three times, ask them if they're holding, once they're holding open, you know how it goes. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Let me know if you have questions and I'll answer them. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time.